morning, everyone, and welcome to Career Maps National Intern Week 2024. I'm Sharon Walpole from Career Map, and we're delighted to be joined by JLR. Before we begin, though, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are going to have a chat going on on the right, you can see, so feel free to put any questions that you have throughout the presentation, uh, either about JLR or any specific questions to interns. I'll be gathering those up for a Q&A that will be following after the presentation. If you want to watch a presentation again, you can watch on Career Map TV where we will be keeping this live. So as you can see, I'm joined by the very lovely Sam. He will be walking you through the rest of the presentation and I'll join you later. Brilliant. Thank you. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this. Not the best uh, weathered Monday morning, but we appreciate you all being here and dialing online. Um, so I'm Sam Parkin, I'm the University Engagement Lead at JLR, uh, and I've been in this role for uh, two and a half years now, I think. Um, but I started myself as an undergraduate way back in 2016, make me feel super old, um, but back in 2016 uh, in HR, and I've done a number of different roles since then. Um, but one of the great things about doing that undergrad scheme was it got me the chance to come back as a graduate and continue my career at JLR. That's where I've done all the different roles, found myself in early careers and really, really enjoying it. So um, I've been in I've been in your shoes as people on the call. Um, and hopefully today I can give you a little bit more information about the present day undergraduate opportunities that we have. Talk to you a little bit about our application process as well and give you the chance to speak to and ask questions of some of our current undergrads that are on programme, as well as some graduates that have recently completed undergraduate programmes uh, more recent than me. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction into JLR, you might look at the logo and you might not be super, super familiar with who we actually are, but hopefully if I say Jaguar Land Rover, and hopefully if you read those four brands across the top, Range Rover, Defender, Discovery and Jaguar, you start to get more of an idea. Um, we have changed our logo quite recently and essentially become this house of brands. Uh, and those brands are distinct global brands that really embrace the design philosophy that we have in terms of modern luxury and then emotionally compelling and unique. And essentially that's our business direction has moved very much into this modern luxury world away from just being a manufacturing engineering company, which you might have been known as in the past and very tech first. And we're creating vehicles across those distinct house of brands that are each got a completely unique identity. Um, so it's a really exciting time. I think in JLR, there's a lot of things happening internally. We've got the new Jaguar that's coming next year, for example. So there's a lot of excitement being built. Um, might be a little bit small on the picture, but JLR is a global company. So we operate in many different countries, UK being our predominant operations, but we've also got um, thing plants and factories and different things in India, in China, Brazil, Slovakia, just to name a few. Uh, and then in the UK, most of our opportunities are based in the West Midlands, typically. So um, you'll see a lot of roles in sort of Coventry and Warwick type of area. But there are also some opportunities, particularly in manufacturing in uh, other areas of the West Midlands, like Wolverhampton and uh, Solly Hall, for example, and also up in Liverpool. And our sort of strategy that was introduced probably about two and a half years ago now is called reimagine and it's still the strategy that we use today so this is our global strategy around how we see our future and there's quite a few different points here um that are our, essentially our commitments and things we want to deliver in the next uh five to 15 ish years really um so i mentioned jaguar that is being reimagined as an all electric brand from 2025 so we've stopped production on most jaguar vehicles now and it's going to relaunch very soon so that's definitely one to look out for I think the all electric range rover has uh, just come out not too long ago this year so that's really exciting as well and that's kind of where our business is moving so we're i guess moving away from um the old diesel and petrol engine to the past and we're starting we've looked at hybrid vehicles and starting to look at more electric vehicles as well with some commitments on having um many different nameplates available in all electric form by the end of the decade sustainability is really important to us as well and we've got a target to achieve net zero carbon emissions across all of our supply chain as i 
products and operations by 2039, which is a, a massive target, um, but something that hopefully we will deliver. And yeah, I think overall it's a really exciting time to join a company like this as we undergo that big change, as we step into new ventures, creating new vehicles. Um, and there's many different programs that we offer as a result, which I'll talk to you about in a second. So just because I know it's right at the start of the academic year and your brain's not might not be in career thinking mode yet. So to take it all the way back and say, what is an undergraduate placement? Um, placements can definitely vary in years, so in length, sorry. So all the different companies that you may speak to over the course of the next few months when you're making applications, some of them might have uh, short-term placements, some of them might have year long, some might be even different to that. But overall, a placement is definitely a way to gain industry insight and get real experience to complement your degree. Um, hopefully all of you enjoy university and love it. I know I didn't so much, to be honest, but I would genuinely say that when I did my placement, some of the theory I was learning just started to make a bit more sense. And actually, when I uh, went back to my final year and I was working on my dissertation and uh, doing some of those other modules, it just started to click a little bit more for me. And I, I really felt like my placement was the thing that helped that. And it also told me where I want to go in my career. And I think that's a good thing about a placement. It's kind of a, a try before you buy. You might go in into in an industry in a role and not love it and that's totally okay because it doesn't have to be the rest of your career um but equally you might absolutely love it i know i did and it really told me that actually you know hr is a career for me and jlr is a place that i want to be so uh placements provide really good sort of blend of personal and professional development that's going to really help you in the future and as it says at the bottom can lead to a full-time career so i think that's one of the, the best parts of doing a placement is i know when i went back to final or before i went back to final year and i was on holiday in ibiza and i got the call saying i'm going to come back as a grad so in my final year i didn't even make an application anywhere else i wasn't worried about it i knew i had a job in my back pocket and i was able to really focus on my studies and i think that that is a, a major major benefit and in terms of finding the right placements for you, I would definitely encourage you to first start thinking about see, what are you studying? And based on that, what are the types of roles you might be interested in? What, um, com what, what industries offer those types of roles? Are you going to go into automotive or construction or business or banking or whatever else it might be? And then based on that, what uh, what companies exist in those industries? What Which are the best companies looking at things like the Time Start 100, for example? Also, use your university careers service. They are criminally underused. And I'm going to be honest, when I was at uni, I probably didn't use them much either. But having worked on this side of the pond now, I definitely understand the value of them. And they are there for you. So please use them. Um, you can obviously speak to family and friends, potentially, that have gone down similar routes in the past. Uh, but use good websites so obviously you've got um career map and you've got national intern week and the resources that are going to be available there but things like grad cracker rate my place but an individual company websites are all going to have tons of information out there for you that's going to help you in your search and do your research and prepare there's going to be questions no doubt whether it's in the initial application or it's throughout the interview stages that are going to want you to demonstrate that research and bit of knowledge about the company the role that you've applied for and why how your skills and experience align to that role so it's really important you do that bit of prep and what i would say is it obviously can take some time and you're getting back to uni you want to have your fun and, and obviously um do your studies and all of that stuff but it's definitely worth that bit of time up front now in doing that bit of research deciding on that list of 10 15 20 companies that you might want to apply for and getting those applications in because you will reap the benefits when those offers start coming through i can promise you that so to give you a bit of information about the programs that we have available at jlr um from an undergrad side which is what i'll obviously focus on for the purpose of this webinar there are lots of different routes that you can go into all of our placements are 12 months long so unfortunately we don't offer any summer internships um so it is just the full year in industry but you can see from the list there are so many different areas so it's it's not just engineering or it's not just manufacturing 
lots of different pathways within engineering. You've got a massive breakdown of um, hardware mechatronics, for example, which a lot of mechanical engineers will tend to go into. You've got propulsion, you've got electronics and complex systems, you've got software and also our um, IO digital programs as well, which is looking at the gamification and sort of how, how we model our plants of the future. You've then got some corporate areas, you've got commercial, you've got people, for example, um, and a brand new one, program management. So we've never had that route before. And I know there's a lot of students that are interested in a career in that type of field. So um, program management is brand new for 2025 intake. There's also a new data analytics pathway as well this year, which is exciting. And then on the graduate side, you can see a lot of the same programs. Um, and even more actually. So there's a couple more pathways you'll find within some of those sort of different program areas, but largely similar programs, which essentially means you, know, you can do an undergraduate placement with us and you can go then back in as a graduate into the program that you've been doing and sort of pick up where you left off. Um, the salary as an undergraduate at the moment is 23434 on the dot. Um, and then if you were to return as a grad in the future, the starting salary now is 32000 also with a 2000 joining bonus, which comes in very handy. Um, and it rises to 39000 on completion of the two-year programme as well, which, yeah, is also pretty good. In terms of entry requirements for all of those roles, um, you need to be on track for or achieve a 2-2. So obviously as an undergrad, you're going to be on track because you typically should be still in study. Um, for a grad programme, you can either be on track if you were a final year, for example, or you could have achieved the 2-2 or above in the past. Um, and there's no sort of time limit on that. So if you're someone that's on the call, actually, that's maybe completed uni 5, 10, 15 years ago, you can still do a graduate program. The only differences, I guess, are depend role dependent. So if you were to apply, for example, to our commercial undergraduate program, there aren't um, typically any degree requirements as such. You don't need to have done this, that, the other. Whereas if you were to apply for software engineering as an undergraduate, you would need to be doing a subject like computer science, software, cyber engineering, or very similar to be able to apply to that program. All of those details are on our website. It's currently being updated at the moment because the plan is for our roles to go live on the 7th of October. That's a date for your diaries. Um, but the website is currently being updated. However, a lot of the information currently on there from last year programmes is pretty similar or the same. So uh, you can have a look now. But certainly if you set a reminder for um, just under two weeks time, you will see a lot of updates to that website and the new information, including that new programme management route as well. Uh, I will try to play this video, although I might not have embedded it. So if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. I can send it after. No, that's all good. Um, it was just a, a video of one of our undergraduates talking about their experience, but you've got four of them on the call today. So I'm sure that they can do that between them. Um, wanted to talk through a few of the benefits as well of doing a placement slash working at JLR in general. Um, so I think one of the really good ones is the mentoring and coaching you receive you know you'll be working with diverse teams there could be people in those teams that are graduates or apprentices that haven't been in the business long and there could be managers or other people that have been in the business for 20 plus years so you're really going to learn from industry experts and people at different stages of their career but also what's really important to say is that they're going to learn from you as well i think there's there can be misconceptions sometimes that um as an undergraduate, you know, you're going to be observing, not going to be responsible for loads of stuff. You'll just be helping out um, with little bits of work and projects. And genuinely, I don't think that that is the case. You will get involved in uh, lots of work, a variety of different projects, and you will get responsibility and autonomy within that as well, which I think is a real good perk of the undergrad schemes here. There's also a really good early careers community as well. Um, they've just launched an internal network actually called the Young Professionals Network, um, but a massive community that exists of undergrads, grads and apprentices currently on programme in the business that are there to support themselves and also incoming undergrads, grads and apprentices into the business. And they work on strategic initiatives to improve the program, but also plenty of socials and fun events. So I know that they've done like summer parties, Christmas parties, ski trips, um, football clubs, other sort of extracurricular type activity as well, not just sports. Um, so that's a really good thing to be involved in. I think when you come away from uni, especially when you live in, it can be quite a tough adjustment sometimes. 
But I think that that is one of the ways in which we help at JLR and our people help, which I think is really great. Um, flexible working opportunities, obviously role dependent, of course. And if you were working in some areas of manufacturing where you might be working directly with vehicles or people, then yes, you might be in a little bit more. But for the large part, a lot of our roles have offered flexible working opportunities where you might typically be in the office a couple of times a week and you would work from home for the rest of it. Uh, discounts are great as well, whether it's on our products, they are still expensive, but um, there are discounts on the vehicles or high street savings. That's that's a really good benefit that I use all the time. So if you are relocating for an undergrad placement or particularly for a grad scheme in the rest of your career as well, and you need to get some new furniture from somewhere and you need to get your TV and your stuff from Curry's, then definitely those high street savings come in, uh, come in very useful. I think yeah, one of the important ones is just gaining that industry experience as well there's no better way than doing a placement and when I go to careers fairs and speak to final years for example they always ask me about what experience can I build and what things can I demonstrate in an interview and I will always say that things like part-time jobs volunteering um, sports or societies at uni they're all brilliant and they're all really good things that you can use but one of the best ones you can get is having an internship or a placement under your belt for sure um, because it's actually put you in the professional world in most cases and there's going to be a lot of things you work on that you'll take away from and be able to then use as examples in future interviews so yeah I can't recommend enough I think another benefit actually and, and coming on to this supporting piece as well um, I know that we started a sort of relocation type project last year so we worked with a couple of the local universities to our sites to try and find some accommodation for undergraduates that were joining the business um, and we have got some links set up so there is it's, it's not JLR housing as such but there are a number of um, places that we can kind of recommend to you in terms of if you were to move from somewhere to um, close proximity to JLR locations but yeah, wider than that, the support piece, you'll have, or um, well, there is a team of early careers um, cohort leaders that will be there to support you when you're on program. So you'll get that dedicated one-to-one -one support, as well as having your line manager, colleagues, friends, hopefully that you make on scheme as well. So it's a really good piece. And it wasn't a thing when I was on program a few years back. So it is a really, really nice change. I can tell you that, you know, the business genuinely cares for you um, and wants to support you and make, enable you to be successful and do really well on program. So I think it's a really good, um, a really good thing that we do. And to introduce some of our DNI networks at JLR as well, there are lots of them, um, some new ones in there as well, things like RISE, for example, which is our social mobility network. There are also networks around uh, things like ethnicity. So we've got our African Caribbean heritage network and we've got our racial ethnicity and cultural heritage networks. We have um, the gender equality network, Pride, Women in Engineering and Allies, various faith networks so um christianity hindu islamic and sikh as well all different networks so there's hopefully something for everybody um and again you know i'm part of a lot of the networks that you can see on the screen not all of them because i have a necessary characteristic that identifies with that network but more so as a ally and i think that that's another thing that you can definitely do with jlr is be involved in these networks as an ally or as someone that identifies with with that network personally and i think they're really great if we go back to you know when i joined the business not all of these networks existed for sure there was only a few of them um but they kind of they were they were just there they were good communities for people to interact with like-minded people but that's kind of where it felt like it stopped whereas i would say now these networks are driving business initiative forward and driving change which I think is great and also celebrating diversity and individuality so they are they're doing so much work you'd learn loads more about these at induction as well they always come along to that which is great but it's things like I know that one of the networks was driving for um, better paternity for male colleagues for example and now um, instead of the two weeks standard now we get four weeks and I think rising to six weeks in 2026 so it's little things like that that they're identifying an area that they we, that we would want change and want to be better and then the help in seeing that through with support of people in the business. So I think that's really exciting and definitely something to get involved in if you were to join JLR. 
So that's probably enough talking from me. Um, I'm going to hand over shortly to a few of our undergrads and grads that are on programme. Before I do, I just encourage you, I know it was said at the start, but please use the chat function if you've got any questions, because we will come back to those at the end. And as um, Michael, Aaron, Matt and Isabella are speaking, if you've got individual questions for them as well, then do feel free to ask them and they'll be happy to either answer here or um, answer in the chat a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hand over now. So um, for each of you, I'll start with you, Michael, on the uh, left on the screen. Do you want to just introduce yourselves, the programme you're on uh, and the university you're from as well? Yep. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. So I am a commercial graduate. Uh, I went to the University of Exeter where I studied business management with uh, industrial experience. Um, during my during my time, my placement year was at, actually done at Renault UK. However, um, due to COVID at the time, but I'm, uh, I've just finished my first year of the graduate scheme and yeah, I'm very, very happy. I'll pass on to Erin now. Hello, good morning. Um, I'm Erin Wotton. I completed an undergraduate year at Jaguar Land Rover in 2019. And I've just finished my uh, graduate scheme on the hardware and uh, mechatronics pathway. Uh, I have a master's in mechanical engineering from Coventry University. Hi, um, I'm Matt. I'm a manufacturing undergraduate and I'm currently studying mechanical engineering at uh, the University of Sheffield. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Hi, I'm Isabel. I am on the Future Propulsion System undergraduate scheme and I do product design engineering at Manchester Metropolitan University. Brilliant, thank you all. So it would be good to delve in a little bit. You've obviously said the programme that you're on, but just delve into um, some of the things you're currently working on or maybe some exciting projects you've been involved in so far. So Michael, I'll start with you. I'll, I'll go in the order of the pictures again, it's easiest. Yeah, no problem. So uh, as part of the commercial side of things, just to make, just to I guess, incredibly simplify it. It's more of the marketing side of things, strategy side of parts of things. So a lot of all that area. So what I've done so far is I've done a role in electrification. So basically as we're moving towards um, an all electric car future, I'm supporting and, and, and working, I've worked with the strategy team to make sure that all of our retail sites, dealerships, all of that kind of stuff around the world are actually ready to sell electric cars. So. It's quite interesting. Um, second one, I've and then my second rotation, I worked at Jaguar UK, where I was working on the transformation. As Sam mentioned earlier, Jaguar is having a it's a change in brand. It's having it's going all electric. So what I was working on was the preparing ourselves for the UK market specifically to be ready for the electric car. I'm now in my third rotation, where I'm in the parts pricing team, where I'm working on working with my manager to create a new stra pricing strategy for all of our parts on uh, around the globe. So. It'll be interesting, uh, but yeah, it's I've, I'm involved with all of that. I'm involved in the YPM, which is the Young Professionals Network, which is a great place for apprentices, undergrads, and graduates to all mingle, get together, where we there's socials, um, all that kind of bits of But also, it's a good opportunity to talk to people. Like, oh, how can you help me with my career, and we'll um, share some tips and advice and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a very well supported network, and my experience with JLR is it's been superb. Uh, all the, from all the managers have been really supporting, supportive, and um, just being able to reach out to any kind of manager, whether it's director, they're very willing to talk to you and give them tips on how to improve yourself and how to uh, get yourself well known. Um, but that's me from the commercial side of things. I'll pass on to Erin. Brilliant. Cool, thank you. Um, so I guess I go back to my undergraduate scheme. Um, I was involved in uh, the, the team was about future model architectures. So it kind of threw me into the world of how do we design uh, platforms and architectures that are going to support the vehicles that we're going to want to make way in the future. Although now I think about it, those dates seem to line up with the, the years that we are actually in now. So uh, it, it goes very, very quickly when you're looking at timing in, in industry. Um, but I really enjoyed that, gave me a fantastic view of all of the different engineering teams within uh, body and chassis, which is where I was placed. Um, and then again, on the undergraduate scheme, I uh, 
actually looked after sort of a, a rig uh, development. So I was able to work with um, lots of members in chassis to coordinate all their parts to go and do some rig testing. Um, the, the timing of that you, you kind of might got from the 2019 and, and then COVID hit. Um, but on my placement, which I think has stuck with me the whole time, um, is that while I had lots of friends that were on industrial placements that had their placements cancelled and they were just sent home, um, JLR, you know, stood stood by ev everybody, including their undergraduate um, employees. And I was sent home uh, with, with my laptop and set up from remote working uh, with my whole team, experienced it together. And I finished off the end of my placement uh, running the, soft, the simulation version of the physical testing that I'd been organising. So I got a really good broad range, even as an undergraduate, of coordination, management skills, um, definitely the sort of physical testing limitations and everything that comes along with that. Uh, and then on the flip side, also got to run the simulations, which I, I found quite a good sort of balance of both sides. Uh, as, as a graduate, um, I sort of used my undergraduate scheme to inform what placements and what roles I wanted to get involved with as a graduate. So again, like Sam, I got the phone call that said, would you like to have a guaranteed job when you finish your master's? And I said, yes, please. Um, so, so I ended up, um, yeah, again, didn't have to worry about my uh, anything from my master's year and I could just focus on my studies. So when I came back, uh, I, I and what is now my current role. Um, I am a component engineer in the suspensions team. So I work on a future technology that we're going to be implementing uh, in within our sort of suspension development. And uh, I've also been involved in physical vehicle testing. So I've done driver training permits to, to actually drive our vehicles and do physical testing with them as part of our durability and robustness testing. Um, I've been involved in more coordination and rigs, again, almost like full circle from an undergrad, uh, as we do our prototype um, development on our electric Range Rover which I found really exciting I think that was a product that I connected with kind of personally thinking this is going to be pretty special when it comes out um, and and so I helped with some rig testing on that vehicle I then did a placement in sustainability uh, and then I've also come full circle and I'm now full-time in role uh, as as a component engineer um, so yeah definitely got to a lot of different things and tried to use my time as as a as an intern and, and then as a graduate to inform the best route and the best pathway for my own development um, and so now I can hit the ground running as a component engineer so yeah I'll pass on to Matt hello again um yeah so like I said before I'm manufacturing undergraduate I'm based in the um the Halewood plant up in Liverpool so a bit further away from um the other stuff but yeah we still get involved uh been to a few events down in the midlands which have been really good as well um i've had a few different projects so far my main one is a uh, an ai inspection tunnel for the cars to go through so the cars will go through um there'll be loads of photos taken of it and then ai will decide whether the car's got like the right spec or not so whether it's got the right wheels the right color and it'll also check for damage so just trying to get that up and running smoothly has been my main project. Some of the side things have been uh, designing and printing some gauges and like jigs to check for headlamp alignment, bumper alignment, and then um, see on the Discovery Sport with the Land Rover badges, getting that in the right place, stuff like that. Um, another one is working with outside contractors for a wheel alignment rig, getting that set up um, and making a few little bits and bobs for that something different every day really here last week i was doing a drive test so uh like erin said i got my um driver's permit within the company got to take out four different discovery sports and um take them on a 50 mile drive test checking for like squeaks rattles all stuff like that so yeah every day is something different it's really good i'll pass on to isabel for you now Hello again. So I work in future propulsion systems as an undergraduate there and I work in the geometric design integration team. So within that role, I do a lot of CAD, which I'm sure if anyone does engineering at uni, you'll know all about it. Um, I had to do lots of training for this and get well integrated into the system. But once I started with that, within propulsion, you sort of work on all different cars from each house of brands so oh sorry um so you get to work on a lot of different things we do within my team diesel engines petrol engines we do the hybrid vehicles and we also work on electric vehicles so personally one of my first projects starting in the company was working on electric vehicles so i got to see 
straight away all of the different new things that Jaguar Land Rover are coming up with. And I got to work on different projects and speak to loads of different people throughout the company, but also throughout propulsion and learn so much, even within my first couple of weeks. Amazing. Thank you. I'm really great to hear about some of the things that you're all working on. And if I just kind of take it back to the placements, why did you choose to do year long placements? And then I guess when you were applying to places, why JLR? So I know, Michael, for you, it was, it was slightly different. Um, so I guess I know it's a different company, but why did you choose to do a placement overall? So when I, so doing business management, um, cause it's quite, quite a broad, uh, placement and to be completely honest, going into second year, I didn't actually going into second year of uni, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And then, so I did a lot of marketing stuff and then it came to place me and I'm a huge petrol head. I love cars. I've always been interested in cars. So I always wanted to do a placement year and have a career in the car industry. Um, and at the time it was going into, so it was, I was applying for uh, placement years in 2020, so right in the middle of COVID, um, and I, I was wanting to apply for Jaguar Land Rover, but either I missed it, but I think I, I think it may have been uh, unavailable due to COVID, um, but understandably. But luckily, I got a placement year at Renault. I took the placement year. I did product marketing. Um, it was really it was great. It was a great experience, and it really helped in in the end because when it came to actually applying for graduate schemes. JLR was actually my first application. And by the time I had applied to my seventh placement, I'd already had the job from JLR. So it completely speeds up the different for, for our business management side of things. And I even seen it in some engineering. You could see the difference in being getting a, applying for a job and getting a job in terms of people who have taken a placement in those who haven't. The, because uh, I had friends who were, who didn't take a placement year, they just did their three years straight away. And then when it came to them applying for a graduate scheme, they were applying to up, upwards of 20, upwards of 30. I applied to seven. And we did the exact same role and we did the exact same degree and had the exact same grades. But because I had that placement year, it inc massively increased my chances and it massively increased the speed of getting a role and getting people and um, companies getting back to you. I applied to many car companies, but my I always wanted to come to JLR, and so JLR was my first application. And luckily, JLR came back first, so I didn't even bother with the rest of them at that, at that time. So it, it massively increases your chances of getting a career out of it. And and to top things off, as soon as I joined, um, I had a bit, there was an increase in pay. I had a nice join up sign-on bonus, which was great. And now and, and I live in Limiton Spa, so not too far away from either offices in Whitley or Gaydon. And so I'm not, I'm not far from Birmingham, I'm not far from London. It's a great place to be right in the middle of, right in the middle of the country, easy travel, and it's an exceptional experience to be at JLR. It's very welcoming and yeah, it's a really good experience. I'll pass on to Erin. Amazing. Perfect. Um, I guess maybe the opposite. So I'm uh, not a petrol head. I'm a self-confessed uh, non-petrol head, uh, which I quite quite find funny now we're moving to electric vehicles. But um, it for me, cars aren't my hobby. Um, I, I love engineering, otherwise I, I wouldn't have done my uh, <laughs> a degree. But actually, when I was doing my degree, I knew I loved problem solving and I knew I loved working with people. Um, and for me, that's what that's those two things that kind of en engineering is. Um, but I, I found it really difficult to know where I wanted to take that degree. Um, I was in Coventry and JLR is almost like a no brainer. You sort of uh, you, you kind of grow up around it uh, when you're doing your studies. It's, it's very there. It's got a great, I think, uh, community presence um, being kind of based in, in the West Midlands and things. And I think it, it would have been silly for me not to apply. Um, and then I think as soon as I walked in the door, it just clicked of, of, yeah, this is this is the place that I want to be. And this is what engineering actually is. I would never have seen myself working in the automotive industry or a car company. Um, and by the end of that undergraduate placement, there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Um, and, and I think for me, what the company does really well is it it wants you to succeed. So it, it gives you the challenges, but it gives you a fantastic amount of support. You know, I, I think I felt at uni that 
they were it, you know everything was a test and there was this like invisible hoop that I had to jump through but I didn't really know where it was and I didn't really know how high it was and I was just trying my hardest to to study and, and get the great you know the good grades that I wanted and then you join a company where actually you sit next to someone who's got a fantastic amount of experience and knowledge and they want to share it with you and they really want you to do really well and it's not you know the, the there's no test to fail you just need to solve this problem and everyone can work on it as, as a team together. So I, I really enjoyed that element of it. I really enjoyed all the extra elements of, that came with the, the company. So as an undergraduate, I, I joined the JLR Netball team. So that was kind of uh, similar as if I was at uni. So for that year that I was at work, I, I stayed with, you know, playing uh, my, the sport that I liked. Um, you get involved in in real projects that made me kind of reassess what engineering was and how what we're trying to do is is I guess kind of trying to create that that little bit of magic and trying to make sure that our customers have an incredible experience and being close to these luxury products for me is is really exciting I, I, I think they are incredible and when you see all the work that goes on for years and years and years kind of in the future and all this all these people trying to just do their best to create something that is truly special um I, yeah I, I was sold and and there was nowhere else I wanted to be um, and I think that was what the power of that undergrad placement did so that when I came in as a grad um, I was ready to just absolutely make the most of it and I think the growth from the undergrad that walked in the door in 2019 to me now and and the role that I have and, and the experiences that I've had and the person I am um, yeah I think I, I yeah, I don't even think they recognise each other. Um, but I, I also had a lot of fun. And I think that's also a key element. I wasn't shut in kind of a dark room with a computer left on my own. Uh, I had I had a real a real laugh for the whole year. And I think um, that that definitely kind of that enjoyment meant that I got a lot out of it as well. Amazing. I think for um, Matt and Isabel, for you, obviously, you are on the undergrad programme at the moment. So the assessment process is probably even more recent for you. Um, so I guess for yourselves, why did you choose to do a placement and why JLR, but also how did you find the process when you were going through it? Uh, yeah, so I'd say the main reason I chose the placement was to give myself a break between studying. So I'm going back to do my master's next year and um, I did the foundation year as well. So it's pretty long. So I've done four years at uni already and I was feeling pretty burnt out. So I was like, I'll take a year um, away from studying, work, get some insight into where I want to go with my career because I wasn't fully sure. So see what the working world's like, probably um, take a year out of studying and save up some money as well. Yeah, so far, so I've been here three months now at the end of this month, yeah, and it's been it's been great. To be fair, there's so much support within the company. Um your manager's not always nangy. I saw someone um, ask the question before, whether you have, like, free reign. Uh, absolutely. So, like, you you obviously have your tasks and projects. You As long as you get that work done, you're all right. But, yeah. Um, in terms of the, the assessment to get in and the application process, it was um, really smooth sailing, I'd say. So there's no CV and cover letter to apply. It was, um, like, an online form that you fill in at first and then after that it led you to an assessment center which was later on um like basic maths english aptitude tests stuff like that and then after that was a um interview and presentation where i didn't feel like i was under pressure at all the like the person interviewing me was really supportive and helped me get through that process but yeah uh really easy well i wouldn't say easy in that sense the application process but Nothing stressful at all and uh, really well organised, I'd say that. Amazing. Isabel, for you, um, so going through the assessment process and then actually why JLR in the first place? So when I was looking at placement, so I'm, I've just finished my second year at uni and I still have a third year to go when I get back. So doing a placement for me was something to really help me understand the things that I've already learned at uni and to help me when I go back to my third year in having some experience under my belt so that when I'm talking about different processes and things like that, I actually have something to talk about. I have a greater understanding of those things. So my assessment process, it went really well, like really smoothly. Well, obviously it went well because I'm here, but... <laughs> 
Um, it went really smoothly. I felt really, really comfortable. So as Matt said, there is no CV involved. So as much as you sort of panic when making your CV and say, oh, I don't have the experience. I don't have all of these things written down on paper. JLR are more about your personal experiences, how you can take things that have happened in real life for you in situations and how you can use those to become a better part of the team to show that you sort of have the skills and qualities that JLR are looking for so that you can integrate into your team and what you can bring to the business really. Um, so also on top of that, you do obviously your maths and English. So there's nothing to worry about there. It tends to be a rather simple process. You'll do it for many different companies. The thing that's different about JLR as well is the interview process is split into two. There's a personality sort of interview that you have in which you'll speak to your like your interviewer and they'll ask you questions about your own personal experience. So whether this is jobs, whether this is running sports teams, running societies, things like that, you don't have to have industry experience necessarily. You just have to take things from your life and make them relevant to your interview. And that's what's really nice is you don't have to feel pressured or panicked in that situation. Um, with the presentation, something else is I would I would recommend just calming down. I know it can be really scary and I know it can be something that can stress you out a little bit, but you'll feel well prepared. You'll get given your interview, like your interview topics and your presentation topics well beforehand. So you just need to chill and really enjoy yourself through the process and show that, show your personality through the screen, really. Amazing. Thank you all for, for sharing uh, the things that you're working on and then obviously how you even got into an undergraduate placement in the first place and why JLR. I think the, the things we've just discussed is a nice segue into um, talking a little bit more about the assessment process. And then before we go into the full on q and I'm going to ask everybody just for their one top tip that they'd give everyone on the call in that assessment. So, yeah, moving through, what is the application process? As uh, Matt and Isabella have introduced already, in the online application, uh, you don't need a CV and you don't need a cover letter, which is nice and welcoming because doing a cover letter individually for 20, 30 models is a lot of work. Um, so you don't need to do one for us. Don't worry about that. The big thing on the online application is one, your eligibility. And I mean that in terms of are you on track for the 2-2? Are you doing the right degree for the programme? And also um, for international students, obviously, depending on if that role sponsors or not, which you can cover later on. Um, and then your motivation. So they're going to ask, you know, why, why have you applied for this programme, essentially? So it's really important that you outline kind of if you've got interest in the industry, if you've got interest in um, JLR in particular or the field of work, whatever it is, that you really sell that motivation and why you want to join, what value you would add. Then you'll move into online testing. There's three different sections here. One is um, match 6.5 personality questionnaire. So it's sort of statements like um, I am a curious thinker, or things like that. So it's not a right or wrong thing, but it's just to build a profile of you. Um, the next one is the aptitude test, which have been mentioned already. So things like verbal, numerical, diagrammatic and all of that stuff. They're quite standard. Um, across a lot of companies you can definitely practice for them online by just googling or actually we have our practice area which is that um so you can't click it but that link that's at the bottom of the slide there um and it is on our employability hub which i'll introduce in a second so you can have a practice um and then there is the situational judgment test so again putting you in the shoes of a person in the program that you've applied for what would you do in certain scenarios when you've completed that, you'll go to the final stage, which is the online assessment centre. That is two different parts. So one is a presentation on a general business topic that you'll get given um, between one to two weeks in advance. And then one bit is the interview. And Isabel's sort of gone through a little bit of what that interview looks like. But essentially, it is all about our creator's code, um, which I'll, I'll flick to and then I'll come back to this slide. Um, so our creator's code is essentially our values as JLR and the behaviours that guide how we work. 
these values are customer love, unity, integrity, growth and impact. So first I'll be that sort of bit about you, your motivation, part of the interview. And then it will be a question on each of these creators codes. So, for example, it could be something like unity uh, and we might say, tell me about a time where you've worked effectively in a team to deliver a project or outcome, something like that, because that unity piece is all about how we work together. So I think what's useful and employability hub should help you with this is to think about these behaviors, start to think about what are the skills and things we might look for behind these and how potentially could you demonstrate them, whether that is through uh, what you're doing academically at university or maybe before in college, whether that is through part time work, maybe internships, place which you've already done, perhaps um, volunteering opportunities, societies you might be involved in at universities or other sports and extracurricular activities. There's a million ways you can get experience and it's really just about how you shape it and take the skills from it. So I know when I applied to JLR, for example, into our HR undergraduate programme, my I guess key things were um, academic work I was doing, leading on some projects at uni, uh, working on at Primark, which obviously wasn't a, a super high level job or anything like that, but it was about how I pulled out the skills from it with problem solving, teamwork in um, fast paced environments, stuff like that, and how I used that to demonstrate why I was interested in the HR scheme and what value I could add. So definitely use these creators codes um, to start preparing your answers. Uh, and then that's the online assessment centre. So next you would get your offer. And then in terms of the next steps, there'll be the we call it keep warm or post offer engagement period. So you would see content from us. You'd have the chance to come into a JLR site and get a feel for it because conscious of the assessment process is all online. Um, and there would also be other things. You'd join an online group where you'd be able to connect with all the other undergrads joining as well as the grads and apprentices. So there, there's lots of stuff that happens there too. And just to mention that um, employability hub. So this is something that me and a colleague created last year. It's on the website right now and just undergoing a few developments for 2025 intake. Um, but essentially it contains more information about that creator's code, more depth on the application process. There's top tips videos. There's things about using the star methodology, for example. There is all sorts on there and if i can give you one tip to take away from this webinar it's definitely to go and interact with that i'll um i'll paste a link into the chat in a second um because it is really useful to you um the final slide on here before i just hand back to our panel briefly to give you all the top tip as well it's just to say that our programs go live on the 7th of october is the plan but before that, you can register your interest by scanning the QR code there. I've also put a link in the chat as well about five, ten minutes ago. Um, so if you register your interest, you'll be among the first to uh, hear about our roles before they go live. And sometimes you get exclusive access to apply in a little window actually before they go live. So it is definitely worth doing. Um, you just pick the program, fill out a couple of basic details, and then you'll be added to the, the talent pool as such. Uh, I'm going to hand over very briefly now before we go into the Q&A, just back to Michael Arian, Matt and Isabel, just for you all to share one top tip with everybody on the call um whether it's in the assessment period or just applying to undergrad placements but yeah michael i'll start with you yeah no problem uh, i have to say the best best tip i can give is enthusiasm and willingness to learn i think that's jlr they are what they want to help you learn and become as diversified and as experienced as you can because they're, they're they're really driving for that at the moment and they will do for the foreseeable future and when it comes to the application stages wherever you can just show your enthusiasm and your willingness to learn something new because it is very new you're not you're not going to have an idea most of the time and that's fine it's, it's okay not to know so if you give it a go and show that you're willing to give it a go then you'll be fine um yeah just show enthusiasm is key so that's it really uh Aaron? Cool. Um, I mean, definitely second that. I think that's a, a very good tip. Um, I think, I guess, more broadly, pick a company that aligns with your own personal values because they're the things that you can't or shouldn't change or shouldn't be asked to change. So I think align a company with, with your own beliefs and then the, the beliefs of that company. And, and, and I guess Sam has mentioned the Creates Code. And if you've you know, it's been along the bottom of the slide, uh, you know, uh, 
during this pack um it's it's core and it's central to to what it means to to be jlr and and work at this company um yeah pick a company that, that aligns with you in that way because everything else we can teach you but who you are and, and your morals and what drives you um yeah they're, they're really special and i think you should also work at a company that holds the same ones as you brilliant matt over to you yeah um along with what everyone else has said i'd say um research the position that you're going to go into do quite as do as much as you can so you look like you got a bit of knowledge before you go in and also just be positive and be yourself now that'll take you a long way like if you're smiling in the interview and you seem like a positive person, then they'll remember that and they'll remember you and it should work. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And Isabel, finally with you. So I completely agree with what everyone's just said. They were some of my points that I was going to make. Um, but mine would be, seconding on what Matt said, just be yourself. Nobody's there to quiz you nobody's there to devalue your experiences or say things against like what you're saying everyone's just there to get to know you I know out of nerves I said some really silly things in my interview that wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily want to say but I just sort of stood on that they were true and it made my, me and my interview have my interview I have a little laugh about it and it just made the whole process a little bit more personal and a little bit more calming it helped me relax so just being yourself if you say something wrong don't worry about it just continue on and let them get to know you really amazing thank you uh i'm gonna hand back to our career map host now and there's been some really great question questions that have come in uh, and we'll be happy to answer them as a group for the next 10 minutes or so Great. If everybody wants to turn their cameras on and microphones on, um, thank you for such a comprehensive uh, presentation. Lots of topics were covered. I have to say we've had tons of questions, so I'm going to apologize a little bit in advance to everybody who's joining that we may not get through to everyone. But what I'll try to do is answer them in groups of questions and hopefully uh, we'll cover them off. And Sam, if you could say who you think is the best person answering the questions, that would be great. So the first group of questions are really about the application process, which I know you've talked about um, quite a bit. Um, but they were, Rob was asking, is there any criteria you need to meet to join the program and apply? And Charlie says, do you have to do numeracy test as part of the application process and is there anywhere to practice things? It seems that um, Sam's having some technical yeah. issues, but so um, I'll see what we can do from it. Um, for the application, you don't need, you, all you need is a two to two just to apply and get in and um, or be on track for getting a two to two, I believe the same with the placement for the placement year. Uh, for the, for when it comes down to the the tests of coming in um it is a personality test there's a bit of a there's a bit of a literal te lit a literacy test but it's it, everything you do is, is quite standard from when you apply to multiple companies they're all going to have the same style of can you problem solve can you do the simple basics it's very it's very repetitive when you apply to more and more places you'll you'll learn the pattern you'll learn everyone is working for and what every company uses. Some companies just use the exact same, it's just copy and paste. So if you can learn that, you're going to make life very easy. That's the, that's, I think that's the best way to answer it. Um, Ollie asked, uh, what is the most standard application you've come across? I don't expect you to know that answer off the top you of your head. You should say mine, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just, <laughs> these, these <laughs> um, but it would, I mean, I think generally speaking, you know, um, Matt talked about um, some um, things that, sorry, not Matt, um, and Michael talked about some things that about the um, application process and being yourself, and we heard all of that. Um, but were there, were there ones that kind of stood out for you that made you think, wow, that's pretty, pretty amazing? I think, I think the ones that stand out the most are the ones where they really highlight their experiences they might have. And when I say that, it doesn't mean oh, I've been a software engineer for 15 years now, I'm applying for your software graduate scheme. 
the, the, they can be basic examples, but the ones that have just really highlighted it and brought it back into JLR and our creators codes, whether it's things like I've worked part time at this company doing this and really learned the value of teamwork and communication. Um, I can see in JLR's creators code that this is a really big part of it, for example, unity and um, having read the role profile. I'm looking through the, the things I'd be doing and I can see that these skills would be of massive value. It's the ones where they, they bring it through and it's kind of seamless um, are the ones that really stand out and the ones that you can tell are proactive and have sought experiences, have read a bit about JLR. Maybe they've met us at a careers fair or on the, these webinars like this or something else and got their answers to those little bits of questions they know to build that picture of who JLR are and if we're the company they want to apply for. And then when they do it, you can just feel like it comes through. Brilliant. Um, I think that's a little hot tip there as well for those of you who are on this session to make sure that you're paying attention and can refer to some of the things that were going to be said. Um, this really isn't a question, but it was questions that were asked that you have answered. But because it was in the chat, I just want to make sure it's out there for the recording. Um, the, someone had asked, do you offer degree apprenticeships um, and the undergrad placements in one? Well, we know they are <laughs> different programs, but it is, um, I think, worth highlighting that you also offer degree uh, apprenticeship programs. But the key thing is you can only apply for one. Do you want to expand on that at all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's three early careers routes as such. There is apprenticeships undergraduate placements and graduate programs so they're very separate but we do offer degree apprenticeships so um, there are level sixes in digital technology solutions uh, applied professional engineering programs and also supply chain and logistics as well as well as a level seven in finance the apprenticeships open in um, sort of start of feb time whereas the undergrad placements open at the start of october so you can only apply to one program as such in the sense of if you were looking at undergrad placements and you applied to the engineering uh, electronics route, you couldn't then apply to the software route and the manufacturing and this. But if you really still, if you were to apply to an undergrad program and not get in and actually decide that you wanted to potentially pop out of university and do a degree apprenticeship, you could apply for a degree apprenticeship in the same year, if that makes sense, because it's a completely different entry route. Right. Perfect. Um... Now, uh, Joshua was asked uh, asked about, um, is there an assessment centre? It said it on the slide. Um, but one of the things um, I thought would be nice for some of the interns to answer is, um, how can you calm your nerves for this if you're introverted? If, especially if any of you are particularly introverted. Any volunteers? Are you too? I'll just say, are, and are you too introverted to answer your question? I, think, I don't know. Well, what I think is really good is that I think what JLI is, is good at doing is getting people out of their shells. So probably if you'd have asked the person that sat the uh, assessment centre, uh, she would have said, "Yeah, I definitely am introverted." And then over the scheme, I don't know now. Um, that yeah, you definitely build a lot of professional confidence while doing these schemes um but uh, yeah i was really nervous uh, for my assessment center i think it, it a lot of imposter syndrome um not not being kind of a, a car person but I'd, I'd done my research on jlr i knew it was a fantastic company i knew the program that i was applying to hardware mechatronics was the one that connected back to my degree and you know i was doing mechanical engineering degree so i think i i tried to focus on what what was what i knew and what was kind of fact which was you know i i deserve to to be here i deserve to be at that company this is what i want to do um and then the rest of it is just yeah you you as a person and and i how i wanted to come across was confident so a little bit of deep breath and going i'm going to come across as confident because that's that's who i want to be as, as sort of at the end so um you know people do say fake it till you make it but i actually think it's about um yeah holding on to to what's true and and you and and how you want to be um and then just kind of running with it um and and yeah no one's trying to trip you up i think it's more positive when you're out the other side but yeah i was terrified <laughs> <laughs> um do any of the other of you want to add anything to that before we go on yeah i'd just say um think about where that interview might take you do think about like the negatives of what could happen just think about the positives of what could happen and like I said, my the person who interviewed me was lovely. He was like very supportive and like say if I tripped up on my words, he'd like correct me. But yeah, there's nothing to be nervous about. But if you are nervous, just think about the positives that it could bring you. 
cool. Well, we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to do a quick fire round. Um, I'm going to aim these at Sam, but if you want to defer one to any of the other ones, let me know. So keep the answers short and sweet. Um, Ellis asks, uh, we did talk about that, what's the best thing working at Jegu well, at Latin Rover as a undergraduate? Um, some of you are interns. What, who's, is, are any of you actually working now? Yeah, Isabel and Matt are on, on placement. So uh, what, shorter sentence, best thing about being there? As an undergraduate. Freedom, I'd say. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, you don't feel like you're being pressured or backed into a corner at any point. They know that you're here to learn. So, yeah, that's what I'd say. And uh, Aaron, I don't think you've said much. So what about you? Me? Oh. Isabel? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I said. I, I, I say a lot. Sorry. Sorry about that. My <laughs> Isabel, you go. <laughs> Um, no, I would say like the different networking opportunities. So the fact that you get to speak to people within the business that have obviously so much more knowledge than you. And it's not about the fact that you don't know things. It's about the fact that you're willing to learn and you're willing to ask them. And they're so happy to teach you and they're so happy to help you with anything that you need. Great. Um, we are against the clock. I am going to have to stop here, I'm afraid. There are lots of questions. Um, make sure, uh, Sam, is there a way that they can get in touch with you or is there somewhere to put in more questions somewhere and what would you recommend? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, the, yeah, the, the best route is probably graduate at jaguarlandrover.com. That is a generic email address that anybody can email and it goes through to our recruitment team. So feel free to use it. Um, I don't mind if people add me on LinkedIn or follow us on socials and comment on there and stuff like that. We'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll happily answer. Just, oh, just want to quickly, I've just seen a question come through of what support is available if you start and you're struggling in your placement. Uh, just quickly, your home manager is really, really supportive. Other managers you can always speak to and other, and then uh, as part of the YPN, so the Young Professionals Network, uh, people your age, older, people who have gone through the executive managers are always willing to help. So that's a support network. It's a fantastic place to be in, in terms of if you're struggling, there's always someone to help you. It's just a quick one before we leave. Great. And I have to say, as someone who actually does live in the Midlands and know lots of people who work in JLR, Land Rover, JLR as it is now known, um, yeah, there's a lot of love for it around here in the community of living here as well. So I think it's great. Um, thank you so much for all of you, all your great questions and interactive um, part in the chat. It's really great to have you involved. Um, and speaking out, uh, that's a good sign of what your prospects can be. I'd like to say thank you to everyone from Jaguar Land Rover. I'm not going to go around to his names in case I get them wrong again. But if you all just want to quickly um, say your name, your role, uh, uh, and, and a goodbye, and then we will sign off. <laughs> uh, Sam, uh, uh, university engagement leader. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, commercial graduate, and thank you, goodbye. I'm Erin, I did an undergrad, I was a grad, and I'm now a component engineer, thank you very much. <laughs> Matt, I'm a manufacturing undergraduate, goodbye. Is a future propulsion systems undergrad, thank you, and bye. That sounded like a farewell from University Challenge, so it's goodbye from JLR, it's goodbye from me from Career Map. Hope everybody has a great day. Goodbye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.